Hello, my name is Owen Nielsen. I'm the director of Great Basin Museum, and we're here on, on uh, in the stream northeastern corner of Millard County. In fact, uh, the Juab County line is just a short distance to the north of us. And we're here to explore and investigate the le old Lake Bonneville shore mines, which are very prominent here and quite well known in this area. So uh, our cameraman is going to zoom off towards the south and we're going to take a quick look at some of the distant shorelines. In the distance you can see two bluffs and at the top there's notches and those are shorelines. And then off on the mountains on the left, the Canyon Range Mountains, you can see a faint line that goes up the valley. That's a shoreline that matches this shoreline here. And then, as we pan off towards the south, you can see a, right on the edge of that promontory, you can see a, where it drops off suddenly. That's a shoreline there also. And then to the right of it, you see the Lemington area, the valley that where Lemington resides. This was carved out after Lake Bonneville by the Severe River, a modest river that you can see flowing down in the valley. And then further to the right, the Pyramid Mountain is called Bridge Mountain. And up near the top you can see other indentations on it and those are also shorelines. And then some of the most interesting shorelines are to the right of that in these clay bluffs you see now. And you can see a line that goes across the top near the top just below the cedar trees. That's a shoreline, a prominent shoreline. And then a little bit further down, you can see where the, the bluffs level off. That's a shoreline there also. Now, while we were walking this shoreline up here, we found some curious little shells right here on this very spot. These are called Limnea bonavalensis, and they're a little creature that lived in Lake Bonneville. And we found them right here on this shoreline. They're also found occasionally down in the valley. Now, when we arrived here, I began walking up and down this shoreline and found these round, these rounded wave action rocks. These were rounded and weathered by waves crashing against this shoreline. We are at the 5,090 foot elevation. This is the high level of ancient Lake Bonneville. And off to my left, you can see in this steep area, you can see where the shore was. The prevailing winds here are thought to have come from the southwest during the Ice Age. And so during periods of storm, they would have crashed pretty heavily against those rocks. Now, part way up the slope, we find these rounded rocks. And we also find lots of them further down the slope where they have fallen since ancient times. But above that shoreline, we see nothing but angular rocks. So these rocks are a strong indication that this is the shoreline. And we can also tell it's a shoreline because it's leveled off here. The backwash has created this little bench. This was the height of the Ice Age. This was an Ice Age lake. It was called a pluvial lake because it was created by excessive amounts of rainfall 
with very little evaporation. And these were the conditions we know existed during the Ice Age. The glacial episodes that created this lake were not continuous, but rather they came in periods, episodic periods of rising and then lowering and then rising and lowering again. But gradually over time the lake built up and became higher and higher. Now if we could stand here 25,000 years ago, there wouldn't have been a lake. And the valley would have been much higher than it is now. But the landscape would have been very different. There wouldn't have been cedar trees, but rather there would have been pine trees growing on these slopes. And probably down in the valley too, there would have been a lot of grasslands. We know that there was a lot of grasslands because this was the habitat that, that fed the large animals that lived here. 20,000 years ago, if we were here, we could probably look off to the west and see water in the distance. That means the lake was arriving. It was, it was increasing in elevation. It was coming our direction. 18 to 15,000 years ago, these shorelines that you saw over in the bluffs were being cut into, the, into that soft clay. And then, 15,000 years ago to 14,500 years ago, that's when the shoreline was here. And it stabilized at this level for about 500 years. And the reason it did is because it found an outlet. North of this lake, on the north edge of this lake, it overflowed and went into the Snake River Plain and then worked its way down to the Pacific Ocean. Now, the animals that lived here were described by one geologist as representing an American Serengeti. This would have been a big game hunter's paradise. There was herds of mammoth, herds of giant bison with huge horn spreads. There was camels, large numbers of camels. There was rhinoceroses. Uh, everything was big. There was beaver that were this high. And the predators included the uh, fearsome dire wolf, bigger than the wolves today, and the saber-toothed cats. And there was also a shark-faced bear with very long legs. They think it could run very fast. A very fearsome creature. 14,500 years ago, the Great Bonneville Flood occurred. This was a deciding moment in the history of this lake. For some reason, it, the overflow reached softer strata. And geologists think that within a three-month period, or maybe a little bit longer, the lake rapidly, or the outflow rapidly cut through this softer layer. And this giant lake the surface of it dropped in elevation 350 feet. It went from this Bonneville level down to what they call the Provo level. And today the Provo level is halfway on the other side of the little town of Lemington down there. So you can see how fast it dropped, how much it dropped in such a stark time. Now it stayed at the Provo level for about 500 years, about the same period that it was at this level. And it had that natural, or it had that overflow up there, and that's what kept the lake stable. But after about 500 years, the conditions began to dry up. There wasn't as much rainfall, and the lake gradually receded from that point on. And that's when the Severe River started to cut the valley below us. In the 14,000 years from then till now, this modest little severe river down here carved out this valley. This shows you what a river can do in that period of time. Now some very important science came from, from these Bonneville shorelines, and that's mainly why we want to talk about them. In the 19th century, a very accomplished geologist named G.K. Gilbert, he, he began to notice that these shorelines didn't match, that some of them were higher than others. Clearly the same shoreline was higher in some areas than others. 
And this difference amounted to over 200 feet. Now how could this be? Uh, lake, lakes are always level. The water in the lake was always at the same height. So how could you have 200 differences in shoreline? There wasn't enough geologic time for natural occurring tectonic events to cause this difference in elevation. So what on earth could have happened to create this difference? And he thought about it and studied these shorelines quite extensively. And he decided there must be a, a layer down in the earth that had plastic tendencies and that could absorb the weight of the lake and actually flow outward and allow, allow the lake bottom to subside that could allow depression in the lake bottom to occur. And then when the lake evaporated and the pressure was relieved, the, the plastic layer flowed back in and the lake bottom of the lake began to rise. And that's, that's how you get the 200 foot difference according to him. He published in, in uh, 1890, he published these results. And then, in the middle of the 20th century, there was follow-up research done by a geologist named Max D. Crittenden, Jr. He published his results in 1963. And he carefully measured the elevations of these shorelines. He calculated the water volume in the ancient lake. He determined its weight. And then he studied the specific gravity of the rocks that he thought were located below the Earth's surface and how much they would flow under heat and pressure. And his calculations came to within 90% of reality. So he came up with a pretty good explanation of what happened. And he went on to postulate the existence of what geologists later call the asthenosphere. And this is a soft layer of partially melted rock that exists just above the mantle layer deep down in the earth. And this uh, discovery has become very important, especially in recent years after geologists have uh, developed their theories of plate tectonics. Because these theories have to have a means by which the continents can move across the surface of the earth. And to do that, they have to have a, a soft layer that can allow floating, just like uh, rafts on the surface of water. And that's how the continents move. So some of this research, some of it done from observations made right here, has played an important role in the history of geology. Now there's a, an, a very interesting formation here that I enjoy looking at that's very interesting to me. It's located just around the side of this ridge on the other side. And it's uh, obviously a fossilized debris flow in the water of the ancient lake during the high Bonneville stand. And it's made up of a mass of poorly sorted boulders, rocks, and mud that came down the side of the mountain part way down. It uh, apparently gave way and flowed down the mountainside. This is called a debris flow. When the lake dropped, it solidified, it lithified, and it's still there. It's a very interesting little page in the history of this fascinating old lake. So uh, that's the story that I have to tell of, of Lake Bonneville and these shorelines. I appreciate your time. I think I'll go over there and take a look at that debris flow. Thank you for your time.